For all the years Father's been president of the Acton Institute, he was always first and foremost a priest, so he took his role to care and curate souls very seriously. And often I would hear from someone who encountered him in his pastoral life that had no idea that he had this large global stage for public intellectual work. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, so, Father, is Donald Trump going to it's hell? It's above my pay grade. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess that other side of him, the collar, uh, eluded me because I never saw it up close until I visited him in his parish life. That devotion, I think, to, uh, to the cause of liberty and uh, the importance of free markets really finds its root in the lived parish life and walking side by side with the people that he's uh, charged to care for and lead as a spiritual father. When I think of Father Sirico, I appreciate his ability to give a homily to students at the parish school there in Grand Rapids and his ability to testify in front of Congress. You as one altar boy to a priest, I know that there must be some notwithstanding a testimony, something that we got to agree on. People don't have to pay taxes if they give to the church, which is really, you know, subsidizing. You don't... No, I don't that. think that's a subsidy at all. That's only a subsidy if you presume that the money is yours in the first place. And I think it's remarkable that his range extends from the very youngest to some of the older members of our population who are engaged in some of the most influential work in the world. He is a force of nature. He has a unique gift of being able to pull together synthetic threads of ideas that many people overlook. And beyond that, he has a particular charism and gift of articulation and forceful and energetic presentation of the ideas of the free and virtuous society. No, I think what is needed tonight is that first things needs to get back to first things. Thank you. If there's anything I think Father Sirico has properly modeled, it is uh, civil discourse. It is a discourse. crisis in our country, and it is a crisis of morality. I certainly never would mean in any way to personally disparage. It's the ideas that I want to engage. I've always so found him to eviscerate the arguments of his opponents that warranted evisceration, and to do so with an incredible kindness and pastoral care. Not only tactically, it's a more sellable message when people like the messenger, but it's also more faithful. It's also more spiritually faithful to what we're called to be. And I think that this will be one of the really underrated legacies of Father Sirico. Essential virtue of liberty. Father Sirico never makes you feel bad about being stupid. That's a nice thing. That's charity. The irony of the Wall Street Journal calling Father Sirico the priest of capitalism is that it was he who taught me not to use the word capitalism. I think we have been defending the wrong thing in the wrong way with the wrong words for too long. I think what his teaching to me, what his legacy institutionally will be, is that the moral high ground belongs with those who honor the human person and who see freedom as a cornerstone to mankind achieving what God created with dignity mankind to achieve. All the way from Seattle, Washington tonight. Well, I have always seen Chris Malrin and Father Sirico as a team, a longtime partnership that go back to the very beginning days of the Acton Institute. And when I think of a leadership transition, I can't think of anything more important than institutional knowledge as well as a commitment to the mission of the Acton Institute. Legacy is a hard thing to preserve without people who understand the vision as articulated by the founders. Well, Chris is one of the founders, right? In some ways, you know, this is like one of the Wright brothers taking over the business while Orville goes off to make popcorn or something. You know, it, it, it's, it, it's in good hands. Father Sirico's had a colorful, dramatic, and consequential life. But as he moves into emeritus status, it's not like he's leaving the stage altogether. We can count on Father to continue to fight for human freedom, dignity, and moral responsibility in the years to come. I 
have a lot to do. I mean, I'm going to be saying Mass on a regular basis. I'm going to be pastorally available to people. And I have some interesting projects that I want to work on. I intend to continue to travel and write and lecture. Uh, I'm looking forward to finishing several books that I have on the docket that I've been wanting to, to complete. This is a, a transition in responsibilities, but not a retirement. And by the way, I've never played a round of golf in my life. It is my hope when we have been together exploring ideas, that you will be fortified by the truth of those ideas and that you will be able to take this and magnify it throughout the world. Thank you very much.